There's this new song called Stairway to Heaven. You may have heard of it. Once yeah, it might be an okay song. It might stand the test of time. I don't know. <laughs> Again, they're great songs. I'm not dissing the songs at all. It's just that these bands have so many incredible songs in their catalog. And I just, you, you know, you, there's those, the, every one of them has those two or three that were carved out and branded the classic, classic, classic songs. And I get it. But for me, I just, it doesn't get me excited. To me, classic rock just means the cream of the crop, the, the, the most enduring stuff. But what's frustrating for me about it is that it's not, for my personal taste, a wide enough net. I just wish it would be a little bit more adventurous. I just wish that people who programmed it or loved it would look deeper into these artists' catalog. Um, I think that so many of these artists that are deemed classic rock, you say to the person on the street, you, you, you rattle off Thin Lizzy and they're going to say the boys are back in town. But unfortunately they're not going to know about the other amazing songs and albums that that band has. Mm -hmm. Why? Because classic rock doesn't play them. A lot of it is that people just live with what they've been force fed and they don't take the initiative to look a little deeper and say, okay, maybe there's other songs, maybe there's other tracks. I think a lot of what classic rock is, is taking the listener back to a place and time when that music came out and making them feel good and making them feel like they felt when they first heard or got that music. Um, and that is really one of the big keys of what classic rock is all about. It's a trip down memory lane. It, if you're 50, it puts you in the headspace of when you were 20. And everybody wants to be younger and everybody wants to be a kid again. So I think that plays a huge, huge role. As every 10, 15 years go by, it has to evolve. It has to move forward because otherwise classic rock becomes what's known as oldies. You know, there's a whole nother format here, oldies. My parents grew up in the 50s. They like what they call the oldies. And that's a format in America as well, the oldies format, playing Elvis Presley and playing 50s music. And um, you need to move it forward. And this is getting into a whole nother conversation, but one of the things that makes classic rock from a radio standpoint so appealing to radio stations is that it appeals to a very desirable demographic. And that is men between the ages of, say, 30 and 50 years old. That is a key demo for advertisers because that's what people that have money and are at a point in their life where they have families and money and they want to spend that money and they have things they need to spend it on. So you need to stay in that demographic because you don't want to get too much younger than that. You don't want to get too much older than that because people's priorities change and how they want to spend money and what appeals to them changes. So, so it's very important and that's one of the reasons why classic rock has to move the needle forward and start eventually playing 80s and after a certain point start playing 90s and keep moving that forward because if it doesn't, the fan base will just keep growing with it and it becomes too old. And when you become too old, you lose the sellability to the advertisers. So there's a whole business behind the classic rock model as well. And uh, if you came at, you know, if you grew up with uh, Soundgarden and Nirvana, well, if you grew up with those artists, you're probably around 40 years old right now. So as a result, you're starting to see Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, certain tracks pop up in classic rock radio. Are there certain elements that need to be present in a rock band to even be considered classic rock? Well, they have to be rock, <laughs> and they and they have to they have to again they have to endure. They have to stand the test of time. They have to have made such important albums or songs that uh, connect with the artist, uh, to, uh, connect to the audience in a way that it takes them back into that place and time. And it's got to be immediately identifiable, you know, and it's, it's got to have a, a certain sound and feel that, that captures that uh, and pulls, the, pulls the, the, the audience in. A lot of what classic rock is about is a trip down memory lane, is making people feel good, giving people memories of what it was like when they first heard that song. Um, so yeah, and, and, and within the, the boundaries of classic rock, it's a pretty wide net as, as far as some of the sounds and styles that you'll hear. You'll get everything from ACDC 
um, to Manfred Mann to uh, Moody Blues, you know, there's a, there's a wide net, but it all kind of falls into that same sort of thing. It's like, wow. You know, there's another thing here that is just, I have to remember because I'm so close to this and I've worked in this business my whole life and because I'm around music constantly. Uh, there's another thing about this whole classic rock thing. At the end of the day, it's really good stuff, you know, and I think that you can analyze it and rip it down and do all this sort of research about it, but at the end of the day, the real quality about it is it's really great, you know? It still sounds great to a lot of people. It still moves people, and whether they're new people just discovering it or who are younger, or the people who grew up with it as it goes, there's a reason why it, it still endures, because it, it's great. I may be sick of it, you know? I may personally, a lot of it, not need to ever hear again, but I... I live it. I have to take myself out. I have to put myself in the perspective of the guy who doesn't live it, of the guy who has a nine to five Monday to Friday job. And when he gets in his car at five o'clock to go home, he wants to hit the preset and he damn well wants to hear walk this way because he knows it. It's like a, a warm blanket. It's like, okay, I'm good now. You know, I don't because I, I look at it from a different perspective. I was the guy who's delivered that to people. It's like, oh, I can't hear it ever again. <laughs> but to the to, to people, it feels good, it is good, and it's what they want. And if you can bring in younger people into that world, great, through through playing some, some of the current bands. Um, because the older people that grew up with it are always going to, they're going to die with it. They're, they're staying with it the whole way. It is turning over that demographic. And uh, it's no coincidence that a lot of these bands are still the biggest money grabbers on the road. Because people want to hear those songs. And then they play those songs. And now you're, you're, you're 50 and you're bringing your kids to the show. Or you're 40 and you're bringing your kids to the show. And suddenly they're getting into the songs. Hey, thanks for watching. My name is Daniel Sarkissian. I'm an independent filmmaker from Toronto.